Have you ever wanted to know how to make a Viking drinking horn? Well, stick around, because that's what we're about to do. As an added bonus, at the end of this video, I'll show you where you can find my own secret mead recipe and brewing instructions. On this channel, we do tons of off-the-wall projects for the outdoors, so if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and ringing that notifications icon so you get notified when I have new uploads. I'm Norseman, and this is Survivology 101. I have made dozens of horns over the years, from plain and simple to detailed and ornate. They are always a joy to use and they are guaranteed conversation starters at gatherings and parties. A raw hollowed out horn is easy and cheap to source, but a simple finished horn can cost hundreds of dollars. So let's go pick out a horn and get started. So now that I have a horn selected, I need to prepare the surface. Scraping the horn after sanding is the best way that I've found to remove the high spots and the facets. And the better job you do now, the better it's going to be later when we go back to fine sanding. Now I have to straighten up the natural rim. So tell me, have you ever made a drinking horn before? If you have, drop down in the comments and just type in skull. So now this one's ready to start laying out the design. And I'm gonna do a knot work pattern that wraps all the way around it. Fairly simple, but it's a relatively thin horn, so I don't want anything that I have to carve too deep.
for better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. Hold on tight. I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just hold on tight. This vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn. So now I'm going to use this Dremel, it's a little ball end, to rough in the lines so I don't lose them. So now I need to start the polishing process, but I'm going to start with sanding it smooth and then I'll take it to the buffer and I'm going to do this before I paint it so that the polishing medium from the buffer doesn't destroy the paint job. The fine powder created by the sanding process will show you every tiny little flaw 
in the entire horn. So pay attention and go slow and get all of those major flaws like that out of it before you move on to the next grit. Next I need to buff this, but before I buff it, I'm going to coat it in olive oil. The olive oil is safe and non-toxic and it also keeps the buffing compound from grinding up the surface or getting down in the cracks. It's easy enough to clean with soap and water after buffing. So now I need to clean this horn inside and out and I'll use this stiff bristled pistol cleaning brush in the kitchen sink with soap and water. So now it's all cleaned up and I'm going to paint it. I'm just going to paint inside the lines here and I'm just going to use your run-of-the-mill acrylic paint from any craft store. I have used testers model paints. I've used uh, sign painters paint like one shot with a pinstriping brush. They're all really great options but for now I'm just going to use simple acrylic paints from any craft store.
So I painted it with multiple coats of orange and gray to match the Survivology 101 theme. All I have left to do is wax it and give it a test run. So that just about wraps it up, but with what I've showed you, you can take that as far as your skills and abilities will let you. As I mentioned at the beginning, I put a link down in the description that will take you to an article that I wrote for BreachBandClear.com that details brewing instructions for mead and my own private recipe. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed that. If you like this sort of thing, consider subscribing because we have lots more coming in the future. The only thing I have left to do now is go test the horn. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you on the next one.